Blend Radio Show has been dedicated to Palisade in Clifton, Colorado, to the northwest corner of the state, and it is known as being part of the Grand Valley and also the gateway to Colorado National Monument. It's home to the Colorado River, peaches, all kinds of wineries and other fruit orchards, too. So it is a beautiful place, and when you have beautiful places, that often draws artists to the region. The downtown district is colorful, funky, fun, and historic, Mm. and it is just a beautiful, beautiful place. And so we're very excited to introduce artist Gary Halschultz, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. I feel like I'm going to be in trouble just now. And Susan Metzger, and they took us uh, through the Blue Pig Gallery in historic downtown (laughs) uh, Palisade today. And uh, check it out, thebluepiggallery.com, and apparently there's a purple cow that's hanging out <laughs> next to the blue pig and the purple cow they like will give other. you ice cream yeah they'll, the purple cow will give you ice cream the blue pig will give you art and uh so very excited to have him gary how are you <laughs> we're good can you hear me <laughs> yes. yes we can yeah. now did i get your last name correctly because i want to go how schultz but you know <laughs> i just did now <laughs> oh it's been pronounced much worse it's just a how and a schultz how schultz oh how schultz okay i'm just used to like the t in there like the how schultz you know but it's it's not you don't have that t in there oh but uh it's misspelled more often than it's uh spelled correctly oh but everyone it's <laughs> Go to, go to Gary's website. It's Gary L. Halschultz, com, <laughs> And I want to bring Susan. You can go to her website, SusanCMetzger.com. So welcome, Sue. How are you doing? Good. Good. On this Glad beautiful, beautiful windy day. day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we had to play, you know, music about clouds and paint and all that good stuff. And I'm just, I'm glad you're both on here because, you know, Nancy and I, as we travel, we always we look for public art stories, and obviously there is one in the downtown district and, and surrounding areas, because I know there's sculptures, you know, and uh, all over the place as well, and wineries and all kinds of places, but um, each of you are artists. So, Gary, let's start with you. Um, you you've been in Colorado, but you're also from out of state. Why did you end up in Palisade? What was What was your draw to this region, I should say? Oh, man, man, it was about 40 years ago when I was a swim coach in the Denver area. And Mm -hmm. just I I needed to move out of, I can say, Denver because of the brown cloud back then. This goes back to the 70s. And I just wanted to move out. So my my hope was to go on the western slope where I used to go fishing and just find a town that needed a swim coach. And we connected. But as I came through Debec Canyon – which is now famous for um, um, weed shots and marijuana and so forth. But I came through that canyon (laughs) and watched the sunset on the book cliffs, and they were Mm. just magenta and golden. And I pulled Mm -hmm. over and got out my guitar and was just, I says, oh, God, please, please, I hope you need a swim coach. I hope you want me. (laughs) And it's been a, it was a, Mm. a, a good love at first sight 40 years ago. Wow. Mm. That is awesome. And at the same time, you're you're a swim coach, but you're also an incredible artist. Right now, this is cool. You're doing art on paper towels and some of it's wine, some of coffee, wine. Um, And at the same time, you also do sculptures. And I love the, you know, the dinosaur before the egg, egg before dinosaur, which came first. Your sculptures are really cool. So Mm -hmm. you don't have any, you you know, you, you, you yeah, you're you're open to what you're doing <laughs> on on art on the level of art. Well, I always figured I'd like to be a contemporary artist. You know, what's oh kind of pushing the edge. And then I think as I got older, I kind of slid into more conservative. But the working with the bronze and the carved cement that um, oh you're thinking so permanent. You know, may may it last a long long time. And then somehow you need something that's more immediate that you can just do, get done with. It could be poor, it could be wonderful, but you, there's no worries. And so going to mm-hmm. coffee and bagels in the morning, I just started sketching with uh, pens on napkins and then uh, with the coffee itself and then tea and not worrying about whether it was permanent or not. And then it became a statement about, hey, this is completely non-archival. Where is bronze, mm-hmm. you're thinking archival. Mm-hmm. And I just, I like the uh, polarization. Mm. It's, it's, it's neat and it's immediate. 
I mean, Mm -hmm. you're not going to spend hours and hours and hours on one paper towel because you can't. (laughs) So you better get it right first time around. I mean, you know, it's like, it, you know, it's, it's kind of, I like that it's instant in the moment, like kind of how sometimes when you're living your life, you have all these forward plans and you think about the past, but what it happens to you in the next 10 seconds could change your life. It's kind of like that. Mm. Mm. It, it is. Yeah. And I, I learned to be much, much faster because the paper towels absorb so quickly. <laughs> and so some of those portraits, um, there's one of my good buddy, James Van Pelt, and because I know him so well, I wound up doing him five times before it was good enough. So you can spend hours, you know, 10 seconds mm-hmm. at a time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. See? See so I, then you, do you learn the different brands of, of paper towels? Like if I want something spread quicker, I'm going to go over here. But if I want one that's the quicker picker <laughs> upper, I'm going over here. <laughs> Oh, you are so on the money, and I'm I'm no longer <laughs> shopping for uh, price or absorbency or any of those. I'm looking at the patterns, and oh, then wow, if yeah. it's a really if it's a really cheap paper towel and thin, the the mm. paint goes right through it, or the paint. That's, yeah, passion teas wound up being my favorite because it's so magenta. And mm-hmm. then the real absorbent one, and they should probably be paying me for this, is uh, Viva. <laughs> they're they're so thick, so absorbent. I can't really get a good edge on it, so I wind up using it as a blotter pad below my my napkins. Ah. You know, just, if anybody just tuned in and had no clue what we we're talking about, they'd be like, they still have <laughs> what <laughs> are you?" <laughs> uh, and you know, everybody's you know fighting over paper towels, toilet paper, you know, all of it. Now it's like you picked a good time, but. It's interesting because I think what your art is doing is also showcasing that in life, things move forward, even though energy doesn't die, this too must pass. And it's kind of a good symbolic feeling of what we're going through now with the COVID thing and all that, that things will pass. Nothing has to be 100% permanent. And it's a total opposite to your sculpture, which is, I'm going to be here forever unless I do a political figure, then you're going to move me. <laughs> so they, at some point, you never know. I'm not, I'm not saying that yours would be. Who knows? But I want to go over to Sue. Uh, Sue, I love your batiks. Uh, this is, from, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is quite a quality, but I was reading also on your website that this has to do with you know, you're connected with historic buildings too. And they are, there's something. There's a there is a touch with it. There's that um, where it's never yeah, 100% I, defined. You know what I mean? It, it there's a I can't explain it, but I, it feels good. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I do. I love I love old buildings. And uh, when I was in my 30s, I really felt like I would never uh, have a place. I'd keep living in apartments and that sort of thing. And there's all these gorgeous buildings. At the time, I lived in the Virgin Islands and Honduras. And Mm. you've got these, you know, old buildings that are adobe and tile roof and uh, the wonderful ones that are made out of coral. And they're just Mm -hmm. beautiful, hundreds of years old. And, uh, like, I'm never going to have a house like that. And I'm never going to own anything. And so by doing them in the boutique, which was a process that I hated for many years and then grew to love, um, that I could put them on fabric and have the house in my apartment. Mm. Um, So it was a way of kind of possessing all these beautiful buildings that I was never going to live in. And even if I had the money, I'd never have enough lifetimes to live in uh, Mm. all those gorgeous places. So mm. for, uh, I started those in the 1980s, and then uh, when I moved here, I I continued a lot with the uh, buildings. Um, this is a perfect place for batik because everything dries so fast. Um, because with batik, what? you're taking your fabric mm-hmm. and you're putting it in dye, and mm-hmm. you're waxing areas and saving them and then hanging them to dry. So sometimes, you know, my batiks will go into 30 different dye baths, which when you're living in a humid climate, that really mm. takes, a, you can get maybe two colors a day, 
But mm-hmm. here I can get five colors a day. They dry real quick. So it, so what makes you choose really good. fatigue? Because, I mean, Honestly, is, it's complicated. It was some, hor- <laughs> some horrible children. Um, <gasps> that's what I'm doing. Is I had tried it in high school, and I, I made a mess of it. And then I tried it in college, and I made a mess of it. And it was mm-hmm. just, you know, I didn't let it dry it's enough hard. and that sort of thing. But in the late 80s, I was working at a school in the Virgin Islands. And there were a group of students who wanted to do batik. And the art mm-hmm. teacher, I was actually teaching history because I love historic buildings. I'm a history teacher and an art teacher. But she mm-hmm. wanted me to work with these kids. She said, you've done it before. And I said, yes, <laughs> and I hate it. And she said, but I've never done this before. Please, please, please. And these kids were like, oh, we want to do it so badly. And it's like, oh, so I took the supplies home one weekend and sat down at my little, um, it was a studio apartment with a uh, trader. It was all one unit. And I had a little <laughs> stool beside the, the stove and I heated up the wax. And in one weekend, I felt like I went from kindergarten to high, sc- high school. Yes. And I I was doing buildings. That was that's hard. Those beautiful schools and stuff like that. And it's like, oh my goodness, this works for buildings. And like you have the adobe and it cracks and you get the crack from the wax. And it's like, oh, wow. this just really works to help give that historic look. And so I was then sold hmm. and I but helped the kids do their projects. And I haven't stopped since. <laughs> wow. And how did you <laughs> land in Palisade? How did you go from well, that? You, I mean, <laughs> it is kind of you, surprising. <laughs> I was living in St. Croix when Hurricane Hugo went through. Oh. Ooh. And it wiped out 90% of the island, um, wow. all the buildings and everything. And so I was teaching, and it, it happened on September 17th. And we didn't have any electricity or running water until February. Wow. And, um, but I stayed mm-hmm. because there were a number of people who stayed, finished out the school year. And when I was finished with the school year, my sister actually has lived in this area for since the 1980s. And she said, why don't you come and stay with me? Because I'm working on my master's and it's really hard making food for the kids. And you could just stay with us and cook for us for a little while. And you can do as much art as you want. And I thought, well, maybe this is, you know, just take a break. And kind of evolved into, I got a teaching job, and then I saw that I could buy a house here for the same price that I was renting a uh, studio basement apartment in St. Croix. So <laughs> I've been here, Well, and then I met the wonderful Mr. Gary Hauschultz, and uh, so I've been here since 1991. Well, you go, girl. Uh, so, so Gary, I want to I want to go. You guys, you got your art here. We saw your art at the at the wonderful Blue Pig Gallery, and we love the Blue Pig. And there's Blue Pigs everywhere, but they're in that building. And there's even a cool basement with rock and everything. And um, you go upstairs, and there's all kinds of crystally coolness in the windows that make all kind of like disco ball reflections. It's cool. <laughs> so it's like this. It's but it's also, you know, in the downtown district, which is small, but you have all this public art. So I want to talk about the public art vision, but let's let's touch on the Blue Pig Gallery. And everyone, you can go to thebluepiggallery.com, which is next to what's coming up, the Purple Cow. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the Blue Pig Gallery, this is, it, it's like a co-op, but it's, it, it, I mean, it's a business, but it's like, it, are these all artists, uh, Gary, that are... From the immediate area? Yeah, mostly from around the Grand Valley. And there's a, we go as far south as Montrose, which is oh, about an hour away. And But no, we all live here. And it just seems to be kind of a sanctuary or oasis for artists. That, and, and I truly believe that it's an agricultural town with the peaches and fruit and that starts with the creative effort of growing things or energy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that energy mm-hmm. is uh, kind of smitten a bunch of artists. So there's about 80 of us at the Blue Pig, which I think is just wow. unfathomable sometimes. 
it's that's amazing. Nice. I mean, we walked through, and yeah, I got caught up in the in the different styles of painting and the use of color and the dramatic difference in subject matter, which mm. is always really cool. Like there's a the one painting that struck me was I first came in was a ballerina one. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and then as you go further down, now you get more regional kind of. This is where I live paintings. I was like, wow, man. And then this there's jewelry, cool. jewelry, yeah. jewelry, and jewelry. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just say jewelry over and over. But 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 then there's also ceramics. And and I wanted to yeah. I wanted to thank you again. Uh, for this beautiful book that is a treasure, the Colorado National mm, Monument thank book you. Yeah. Uh, by photographer Christopher K. Eaton. And we need to get him on a show because I'm very jealous about his photography. And I mean that in a very nice, positive <laughs> way. But, like, dude, I need help. <laughs> like, dude. I want to go out. I want to be able to spend the time he does out in the park where you can, you know, he's got to go you know, this, you know, have a residency. You know, our friends over at the National Park Arts Foundation put the artists in a park for a month and, when you can spend a full mm-hmm. amount of time to capture lightning and all the different colors, especially that happens in a place like Colorado National Monument with all the, the you know, the whole, it's like a mini Grand Canyon from what I can see, you know. We haven't been there yet. We're going on Wednesday. But you look at it and it's like this oh, book wonderful. makes you want to go. Mm. But it also makes you want to stop and um really take your time in a place and understand it, understand the geology feel the textures, experience it, and breathe it in and just soak it all up. And I think that's a beauty in a book like that. So I appreciate that you really have all those, you know, pieces of the art puzzle in inside the gallery. But 80 artists, that's a lot. That's a lot. And nobody would think lot. that in a, in a small community, you wouldn't think 80 artists are represented. And then you have the artists on the outside of the gallery with the mm-hmm. uh, public arts vision, so this is something where you've got sculptures, you've got the uh, Palisade Plaza. Let's talk about Harley, the fish that's made out of Harley <laughs> Davidson. Harley like he fish. stands out. Harley. Harley's like, look, Harley is like, I am the it's fish, the man. Best. Don't mess with me, but you can check me out. Like I am. I'm like I'm standing out. Who who did Harley? Who made who did Harley? Um, sound right. I won't say that again. Her- <laughs> but who made Harley? Uh, Harley's just a delight and uh, Mm -hmm. certainly an attraction, almost a destination for the plaza. Um, The the artist is Lyle Nichols, and he's oh he's got probably a dozen sculptures around Palisade, and uh, he's nationally renowned. And Mm -hmm. last year he was on American Pickers because he just likes to collect stuff. And he was one of our founding sculptors down here. And he had a line about, I have two goals with my sculpture. One is to collect interesting old stuff. And the other is to make people smile. Mm. And so his, um, I don't know if you saw the, the sculpture. It's in Palisade of a bunch of fire hydrants up on a, uh, a, a slab of stone, red fire hydrants. And then at the base of it, is a dog made up of rusty parts no it's way. called Rusty's, Rusty's Dream. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to go out tomorrow and find it, Lisa. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So Harley is made out of uh, Harley wow. Davidson muff- mufflers, the chrome mufflers. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and one of the fun things is across the street, we have a, oh, a, a bar called The Livery, and we'll have a group of motorcycle guys come in and then they'll look mm-hmm. at Harley and they'll go over and they start looking at it and photographing it because there's serial numbers on some of the muffler parts and they even called back to I think Minneapolis or Minnesota wherever Harley Davidson is made just to mm. verify that these are truly Harley Davidson mufflers oh funny that, oh wow funny. I love it and, and next to it you were talking about the dog but you also have in the same plaza uh, the dog fetching the frisbee and yes. so you've made a coloring in page for kids right now of the actual sculpture. That's so cool. Uh, you know, I think I think this is actually huge because public art mm-hmm. is it's out there. It's part of the town's thank you for coming. It's free. There's no dress code. We just want to add it, oh, yeah. add to the uh, ambiance and the feel of the town. And with COVID out there, 
with parents all of a sudden becoming teachers and the kids uh, at home and so forth, that by turning the public arts into a coloring book, this gives mm. the, the parents and the kids an activity. Mm. You know, I have to say this. In When we were in South Africa, um, the local, um, I want to say aquarium, but it was more than that. It, uh, oceanarium. It, it was an oceanarium. oceanarium. One, somebody somebody did something wrong with the temperature of this huge tank that held all kinds of fish in it, and overnight the mm. fish died. Oh and my. it was their main exhibit, and it was really sad. And Lisa and I put together a coloring book, and we sold the coloring book, and the uh, proceeds went back to the aquarium so that they could recoup what they lost and bring in fish and and have that major exhibit. And that's the power of a coloring book. So yeah, I, and, but you did it with, it was local, local. She did the art and she did it on mm-hmm. all the local um, attractions, the beaches and everything that Port Elizabeth was about. And she did that yes. and we put what it was. So each, we got people to fund each page as an advertiser to give back yeah. to the community. Cool. And we got people mm-hmm. that don't even normally sponsor anything to do it. And we, we also put it in three languages, English, Afrikaans, oh, that and was fun. <laughs> and we all, no matter what you did, we had a university help us. We got into trouble. But yeah, we but did that. And, <laughs> but Nancy made me dress as a penguin and yes, walk around well, town selling, I was selling the seagull. coloring book. What? <laughs> you were a seagull, and we had to get the penguin suit. And then we collected the money in ostrich eggs. So don't even. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. But we made we made enough money to put that exhibit back. And also yeah. educate kids. And we did it in this country when we first got back here. We went. We were in Port, uh, uh, San Diego, and we did one on the north coast uh, area of San Diego, so Encinitas and everything. And the museums and things, we got all this feedback about how kids nagged their parents to take them to see the wagon at the museum, to take them to the gardens, to botanical gardens in Encinitas, to take them to the places. All from a coloring book. Families got educated huh. about their region. And it's, I think it's huge. It's powerful. Coloring books and coloring pages are mm. powerful. And I think it's really good for kids to get into art. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know they can do the coloring pages on their ipad things and all the technical stuff. But sometimes it's good to just start coloring out of the lines and, you know, absolutely build on top of it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I think no, it's it's I a think, it's a real fundraiser. If seriously, I I mm, do it, do it, do it, do yes, it, do it. Sue, Sue, don't you archival? Feel, yes, you can archive. You can make them as PDF pages on your website mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. people can download. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. But and uh, Sue, you can even run contests once they download coloring. They have a coloring. Anyway, yeah, don't you start us on coloring pages. We could start a coloring book empire, honestly. Exactly, like it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But Sue, when you think about the peak in coloring bars, pages, too. you just go into a bar and hand them a coloring page and see what happens. It's fun. They're not coloring in between the lines. You know? <laughs> but the teak, I feel like the teak and coloring in has some interesting ways because it's like if you. Adult color in. Don't think it's only for kids. This is for adults too. Oh no, very adults. They do it to de-stress, you know. So this is a cool activity for parents and kids to do together. You can do one more complicated mm-hmm. than the other. It, it. I kind of feel like, in a way, and I'm not degrading batik at all. I'm saying it's kind of interesting because it's kind of reverse. Like for me, if I take a coloring in page, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna reverse or deconstruct the coloring in page. <laughs> and create something new. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like when you, you know, when you look at how you do, but can you've got the wax and everything, then you get the cracks and you get the whole thing of how it works. I'm gonna like make my own new thingies for coloring and page. It's, I'm it's kind of like that because canceled out of school. <laughs> yeah, well, when out. I do a batik, I draw a picture first, and I mm-hmm. use iron-on pencil for it, and then I iron it on the fabric. And they mm-hmm. look very much like coloring book pictures because sure. I don't put a lot of detail in them. And it's just mm-hmm. that same kind of, you know, outline, here's the house, here's the shadow. Yeah. And 
they they really look like like coloring books, and I have cool. boxes of them from every batik I've ever done since it's on this color this iron on image. I just put mm. them in a file, and I I always have them. Mm. Ooh, in case I miss I like one that. of them, you know. <laughs> you can like make that. quilts. You can make I quilts know. from those. Ooh. Oh, mm. yeah. We haven't said that. That's another part of public art here, which we haven't dug into quite yet. It is the barn quilt tour, um, mm-hmm. which is really neat because you go from barn to barn through the farms and orchards. And you, and quilting is a form of art. It's a textile art, but it also, you know, tells the story of the farm, um, even mm-hmm. family history. So it's another thing to do in regards to public art that you can do, especially with this whole COVID thing, is to drive around or cycle around as they do here. And, you know, follow the, the barn quilt tour. But, Gary, downtown you have these sculptures, and you showed us the first one, and it was um, that's right next to the, the blue pig. And uh, that was a special, special sculpture. Uh, which one is that? The one with the herons. Oh, it, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... Oh, it was a 400-pound block of Vermont marble, originally intended to be a headstone. And then the carver, Steve Kent, who who lives here, um, received it because one of his carving buddies who carved tombstones just said, I'm tired of carving tombstones. Steve, could you use these? And he did. And so he carved um, blue herons out of it and just a gorgeous piece. Mm, and it was beautiful. one of our founding pieces as well. And um, my mom had died, oh, like just days before we mm. installed the pieces. So my family got together and we purchased that in memory of mom. And so it became the first permanent piece of Palisade Art Vision. And so, yeah, we're proud that it's uh, down on our third and main street. It's awesome. It's beautiful. And you, I it's one- beautiful. When you walk around town, you'll see flowers, flower sculptures. We were talking about the mm. dog. There's like one that's bouncing. There's one that's like a spinning thing. Like it's like it was a universe one. Gyro that was really, Yeah, that was a trippy one. I mean, I was I was running around photographing them this morning, and I'm like, but then you want to just sit and stand and connect. But the universe one, it's like this twisty, twirly coolness of it's like the universe in a different, like in the future of the universe, I think it's what it was called. I got to look at my little brochure, but it, um, how many, how many do you have now of sculptures throughout town? Well, we have a couple of dozen, which, cool. you know, counting Lyle's pieces and some others. And, mm-hmm. um, and for a town, our size, I, I really believe we, we have the most sculptures cool. for a, a very small town. And the cool thing is it's, we have our permanent pieces, but then we have the temporary program, which we call PAVE, Palisade Art Vision. And so we'll, we'll get another nine, ten pieces in next year, and the temporary pieces will uh, will come and go, constantly giving us oh, new energy, new ideas, ideas, new blood. And then we try to purchase one a year. Mm. That's nice. nice. So the artist gets paid. And I have a thing about this with public art. The artist gets yeah. paid to do this vision. They go in and do it. But it's what the artist gets to say and do. And, you know, we've done so many shows on public art. It, I get it. I'm like, it's a whole new thing for me in life. I never knew, like, the label of public art until we started doing the tour. And our friend Victoria Chick, she's a contemporary figurative artist out of Silver City, New Mexico. She goes, girl, as you travel, I want stories of public art. We have a map of it up on nationalparktraveling.com. Look under our Love Your Parks a tour section, our interactive maps, and you'll see Palisade on there pretty darn sh- soon because this is a destination. And going mm-hmm. around, you just start to realize that artists can do what they want. And as a you know, someone who's a visitor or a local, you're going to look at it and you're going to think about it. And like mm-hmm. you said, Gary, there's no dress code. And I think that is huge. And you don't have to pay for it. Public <laughs> artists, that you get to experience art without having to pay for it. But, and so this is a community supported thing, which is wonderful. We feel very fortunate to have the town support, the chamber support. Um, and right next to us, Palisade is on the east end of the valley. Uh, Grand Junction, 
was really the founder of a um, temporary public art program back in 1984. The uh, founder was Dave Davis, and he, he's a, a legend, and he was one of our four founding sculptors here as well. Okay, so this is where it starts, and it keeps going. I, I wanted to go to you, Sue. So go ahead, Nancy. No, I was just going to say that when, when you have a public art program and, and you're installing sculptures and with temporary, moving them on, bringing in new ones, that is such a welcoming thing for a visitor. Every single thing, it's not about do I like the sculpture or do I, I not relate to it or whatever. It's about somebody bothered to do something mm-hmm. for a visitor and for the residents, which makes and the town the welcoming. It makes it and, welcoming. It says, "Hey, come on down. We're cool." Yeah. And and it, and it's not, um, you know. Sometimes people get scared to walk into art galleries. I think that that whole snobby thing is going out the window pretty quick. Well, like winery. You know, yeah, the, yeah, the <laughs> snobbery thing is done. Thank you. Thank you very much. And public art has a lot to do with just come on down, look at the sculpture. Look at the paintings. Look at this. Look at that, and make your own mind up. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it, it's cause for thought. That's how we think about it. It's cause for thought. Exactly. Exactly. You like it or you don't. It's cause for thought, and nothing is better than making people think. That's how I have to think about it. Yeah, and the the community actually putting you know, the funding towards it says they care about the mm-hmm. arts, which means they care about quality of life for the arts, for the locals, and for the visitors. So you can't get better than that. I like it. I like it. Sue, mm. before you guys go, I wanted to touch on the purple cow. The purple cow, there's a cool <laughs> dumbwaiter thing, and, like, this whole thing, the purple cow next door. I love the purple cow. Nancy, you want to recite the purple cow? Can you recite Oh, no, I cow? want Gary to do it or something. I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's um, going to do it? Well, I can do that, but you can you can sing along with me, Nancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, wait, wait, the, wait. Uh, okay. The Purple Cow is an easy transition from, it's the same owner of the building, Darren Carey, mm. And he owns a dairy in Grand Junction called Graff Dairy. And so he likes the art, so we have the Blue Pig Gallery. And then when mm-hmm. he started the the dairy part next to the same building, and Purple Cow just seemed a, an automatic. But it, it took several months uh, into the origination of the building before a customer said, you know, there's a poem called The Purple mm-hmm. Cow. Mm-hmm. And we go, no, no. And he yep. recited it. Just ver- verbatim, just he said he grew up with it, and it's by Gillette Burgess, who mm-hmm. was a famous art critic back in I think San Francisco over a hundred years ago. Yep, and he wrote this. It's a little limerick, so if you're ready, go ahead. I never saw a purple cow, I never, I hoped never to hoped see to one. see one, but, but I, I can, can tell, tell you, you, I'd rather anyone. see than be one. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a purple cow. And so, Sue, this is going to open at some point for people to be able to have milkshakes and things like that or ice cream? We, it sure should. <laughs> you saw it's almost ready, and uh, we are looking forward to it because each one of the artists on the uh, first floor of the Blue Pig, we work one day a month. And so once the purple cow's open, we won't have to bring our lunch. We'll just go oh, over there and that's... get a milkshake or something. <laughs> oh, I that's awesome. want to know what's what's going to be in the purple cow milkshake. The I know we got to have a Come purple on. one. We have have to have like a blueberry one or purple kale yeah. mil- milkshake. That's it. Ew. There it is. I know. Yeah. Well, thank thank you both yeah. for joining us. It has been such a treat to meet you, and thank you for taking us around. And uh, again, yeah. uh, everyone, go to the bluepiggallery dot com. For the Blue Pig Gallery, you got to go meet the Blue Pig, and also keep up with <laughs> Sue and her art. Go to susancmetzger.com, and also keep up with Gary at garyelhauschultz.com. So keep up with everyone. Come out to Palisade, enjoy the arts, and enjoy the views. So thank you both for joining us. <laughs> yeah, you guys rock. Thanks for having us. Thanks, you guys. Take you care. were delightful. You are too. <laughs> thank you. Enjoy.
enjoy the area. 